was with barely concealed delight that uh, Chicago Sun-Times columnist Neil Steinberg reported the findings of the Pew Forum study just came out that talks about the rise of nuns in America, the N-O-N-E-S, those who claim no particular religious affiliation. Uh, he further crowed that an awful lot of the younger contingent seemed to be more and more um, unaffiliated with uh, religion. What followed from this little reportage was, um, even for Neil Steinberg, a <laughs> remarkably anti-religious uh, screed. Uh, here's how the argument basically unfolded. Is He said the Founding Fathers planted like a virus in the body politic of America this um, idea of freedom. And that freedom has so grown over the centuries that now it threatens religion itself. That people are finally throwing off the shackles of oppressive religion with its petty superstitions and weird arcane liturgies and is now joining the ranks of the um, liberated uh, moderns. Well, two major problems with this line of argument. Uh, the first one is that it utterly ignores something I've emphasized a lot, namely that the liberty rightly prized by Enlightenment people and rightly prized by its, um, its uh, advocates today is correlated very tightly with religious assumptions, namely that each individual person is a subject of infinite worth and dignity, freedom and equality, is not an idea that was commonly shared in the ancient world, the pre-Christian world, at all. If you doubt me, consult Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, any of them. Furthermore, look at the um, 20th century uh, totalitarianisms, those that had thrown off religion. What happens to individual rights, dignity, freedom? I'll leave that to you, but look at the piling up of corpses in the 20th century by anti-religious uh, modern ideologies. The idea is, as Jefferson so clearly saw, we are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's the Creator who grounds human dignity, equality, freedom. When God is moved out of that picture, what happens is a profound violation of the very freedom that Neil Steinberg and his colleagues uh, praise. But you're playing a very dangerous game indeed when you bracket religion uh, from that uh, picture. Here's you know, one example he brings up is how African Americans found so much freedom in the course of American history through the abolitionist movement and the civil rights movement, conveniently forgetting, at least failing to, to uh, announce, that those two movements were deeply influenced by religious assumptions. Think of the William Lloyd Garrisons and John Browns in the 19th century, the Martin Luther Kings in the 20th century. These were not a secularist ideologues. These were profoundly religious people who were calling for liberty precisely because of religion, not, um, not as opposed to religion. Here's the second problem with it, and I always smile when I see this from people like Steinberg. It's as though the kind of secularist modern view is simply the neutral view of sweet reason. And everybody else, especially religious people, are these kind of peculiar marginal figures with their odd... Uh, superstitions and liturgies and so on. As though, so here's my point, as though secular modernism is not itself a very peculiar ideology. Here's what I mean. The 18th century gave rise to the Enlightenment. Steinberg is a, is a 21st century advocate of sort of the radical Enlightenment, you might say. The Enlightenment view, rationalist, subjectivist, empirical, anti-traditional, okay, is a view. It's a philosophy, it's an ideology. Good points in it? Yes, I'd never deny it. But it's got its own shadows, its own um, uh, weird uh, um, profiles and angles, its, its own limited view. It's as, if you want, sectarian and peculiar as any religion. The claim that somehow the 18th century Enlightenment is just reason, is just the neutral way things ought to be, come on. It's as ideologically um, conditioned, really, as any religion. Now, I'll get back to We can have an argument about it. I have no quarrel with that. But don't claim that the 18th century Enlightenment represents somehow just sweet reason and everything else has to um, come up to it. In many ways, Steinberg is a, a popular um, representative of the position of Jürgen Habermas, maybe the greatest living philosopher. Um, but Habermas, over the years, has argued 
passionately for the Enlightenment paradigm. He'll say, for example, the only people legitimately allowed around the table of conversation in a uh, civilized society are those that accept the uh, assumptions of the Enlightenment. Well, I mean, first of all, it's a pretty aggressive move. But secondly, it excludes from the table religious uh, figures who represent the oldest intellectual tradition in the West, who come out of a tradition conditioned by some of the greatest geniuses of the West, I mean, from, from Dante to Thomas Aquinas to Anselm to John Henry Newman. But those people, by this sort of enlightenment prejudice, are excluded from the table of conversation. Now, utterly congruent with all this business is Steinberg's um, really kind of sneering relegation of religion to the level of a hobby. Let me quote right from his article here. Life is a long time, and you have to fill it somehow. And adhering to the various tenets of Lutheranism or Baptism or Seventh-day Adventism is not inherently a worse use of your time than, oh, knitting colorful Afghans or playing John Madden football or anything else. See, I mean about sneering. Oh, religion is, sure, it's a nice little hobby that certain people have. We you know what strikes me about that is here's this religious tradition. I'll just speak from the Catholic Christian tradition. St. Paul, Origen, Augustine, Anselm, Aquinas, Newman, Dante, Chartres Cathedral, the uh, motets of uh, Palestrina, the music of Mozart and Bach. Oh, that's just the level of knitting Afghans. That's just a nice little hobby that a few weirdos have. I mean, give me a break. Christianity has got this extremely powerful intellectual tradition. And in fact, has largely shaped Western culture and, by the way, invented the university system. But see, this is just the kind of move you find in the Habermas-Steinberg line that religion, oh, it's fine for a few, you know, simple-minded people. While we Enlightenment rationalists take care of serious business, you religious folks just go off and have your little hobby, you know. Come on. I think what we ought to do, we religious people, is engage in a kind of nonviolent resistance to this very violent, very aggressive move. We should do what Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther King and, frankly, John F. Kennedy did, namely bring religious language very much into the public conversation, not be cowed by this aggressive um, secularist rationalism, but bring forward our religious language in its appropriate uh, public context and thereby resist this tendency to uh, push us off rather aggressively to the margins.